So I sit down at my desk to pay my bills for the month and I have a stack of credit cards, a big stack. And each of these credit cards has a significant balance on it. I racked up a lot of credit card debt while I was in college and now it's time, now it's time to pay the piper back. Now, I decided that I wanted to try to pay $1,000 a month towards this credit card repayment. Now, $1,000 a month, that's $12,000 a year after tax. So that's a pretty good chunk of my first year's salary. But I've ran the numbers, and I think pretty motivated to get this paid off. I think I can do it. About a year, year and a half later, I write the last check or, or you know, paid off the last balance. And then I realized over the last 18 months or so, I've gotten used to living on this. Right? There's $12,000 that I was used to not having to live on to survive. So I had a choice. I could increase my lifestyle by $12,000 a month, or I could take this money that I was already used to getting rid of, and I could send it into my savings account, my investment account. So that's what I did. I already had the habit of transferring money from my checking account to somewhere else somewhere else used to be the credit card companies now i can send it into my own account so as that time went on that balance grew to five figures i remember it being twelve thousand dollars that was a lot of money for me at the time that was a really proud moment and that wouldn't have happened if i didn't have those habits good habits are are powerful tools that we can use it's like automatic behavior that we can use to help get us to where we want to go find out more right after this Hey, it's Derek Hagen. I'm a financial behavior expert, and I'm here with you with another Money Health presentation where we're going to talk about building good money habits. So a good money habit is basically, uh, well, I mean, it's a habit that's good for you. Now, good outcomes come from good habits. So whether that is paying off debt or saving or contributing to your retirement accounts or your kids' uh, you know, education funds, or whatever it is that you want, whatever that good outcome is that you want, that comes from good habits. Uh, now, the behavior, a habit is behavior that's automated. Uh, so that would be our ideal choice. Now, sometimes you might need a routine, and, and that's pretty good too. But you have to sit down and say, I am going to do this and start the routine. What's the least likely to work is if you have to, to push yourself, if you have to use your willpower to try to get yourself to do these things, it's not really going to work. So good outcomes really sit on a solid foundation of good habits. And remember, they're automatic and they're good for you. So that's why we want to create those good habits. It's not easy. We have a negativity bias in our brain, which means that all the stuff happens throughout the day, throughout our lives. And we remember the negative stuff. We're always complaining. We're always wishing that something would be better. We always notice the, the bad stuff that happens. We rarely notice the good stuff that happens, even though it does. That's why gratitude is such a powerful tool, uh, you know, to increase our well-being and our happiness and our satisfaction. But it's the same negativity bias that makes it very easy to know what we don't want. Think 80% of the stuff that happens to us is bad. So it's very easy to say, well, I don't want this bad stuff to happen anymore. What's hard is to actually figure out what you do want. It's, it's hard to say what I do want. It's easy to say what I don't want. But we have to figure out what we actually do want if we want to have some kind of direction that we can put a flag in the ground and start moving towards. Now, Habits are behaviors. They're specific behaviors. So having a vague idea of what you want is helpful. It's a good first step, but it's not as useful as actually having action steps. So for example, wanting to save money or wanting to have a big account balance, that's pretty vague and squishy. Okay, Transferring $100 from my checking account into my savings account, now that's a behavior that can be automated. That's a behavior that can be turned into a habit. You can't turn be a saver or have a big balance into a habit. So in order to make or give yourself good habits, you have to know what specific behaviors you actually want to 
implement. Now that you know what you want and you know what the, what the behaviors are that you want, habits happen because we get prompted. You can think of a prompt as like a trigger. So we get something happens that reminds us to do something you know, without thinking about it. So this could be your memory, or right? I could remember, hey, I need to do this. That could prompt you to do something. Or it could be some bodily sensation, right? I'm really thirsty. I feel thirsty. That's my prompt to go get a glass of water or to take a drink of water. But memory-based prompts are not the good are not a good source of, of lasting good habits. So another prompt that can be useful are notifications. Notifications on your phone, for example, or your calendar. Those are a good step. Phone buzzes, you look at it, it says, hey, remember, meditate for five minutes. Good, I got this reminder, that's awesome. Here's a reminder, go pay your bills. Here's a reminder, go transfer money to your savings account. Here's a reminder, pay that credit card balance. Those are good, but where they're, where it can fall apart is what if you get that reminder while you're grocery shopping or while you're at the gym or while you're out walking the dog? So if the prompt happens and you don't have the ability to actually do the action, it's kind of wasted. Now you have to rely on your memory again because you have to come home and you have to say, hey, I need to do this. I remember that I need to do this now. So try to find a prompt that works. Here's, here's a great tool. Pairing behaviors. So what's something that you're already doing? Right, so for example, are you already paying your bills? Use that as a prompt to transfer money into savings. So think of something that you're already doing. Use that as the prompt to implement your new habit that you want. It should be easy to do. If you try to do too much too quickly, it's more likely that you're going to get overwhelmed and it's more likely that you're going to stop doing that behavior. And then reward yourself. And this doesn't mean you know go spend a lot of money to reward yourself. This could be something as taking in the moment and feeling proud of yourself, letting those feelings soak in. That's a good uh, reward. Have some chocolate around. Have a piece of chocolate every time, or go get yourself a cup of coffee. There are inexpensive ways to reward yourself, but you want to reward yourself because those rewards a reinforcement for doing the good thing. And eventually you won't even remember that you're doing it. And that's good money out.